What if I told you that scientists have discovered that Indonesian DNA contains genetic markers from a mysterious ancient civilization that was completely wiped off the face of the Earth 12,000 years ago? A lost continent called Sundaland, twice the size of India, that was home to advanced maritime peoples who built sophisticated societies, developed ocean-crossing technologies, and left behind genetic fingerprints that prove they didn't just vanish when their homeland sank beneath the waves. They survived, adapted, and their descendants are walking among us today. In fact, nearly half the DNA of some modern Indonesians comes from these ghost populations whose very existence was unknown to science until 2021. This isn't just about genetics. This is about the discovery of a lost branch of humanity that challenges everything we thought we knew about human civilization and reveals that our ancestors were far more advanced and interconnected than we ever imagined. Hey everyone, today we're diving into one of the most groundbreaking genetic discoveries of the 21st century that's completely rewriting the story of human migration across the Pacific. Indonesia, the world's largest archipelago, home to over 270 million people and hundreds of distinct ethnic groups, has just revealed genetic secrets that are forcing scientists to throw out decades of established theories about how our ancestors populated Southeast Asia and the Pacific Islands. For years, researchers thought they understood Indonesian genetic origins through a simple north-to-south migration model. But cutting-edge DNA analysis involving over 2,000 people from across the region has uncovered a story so complex and surprising that it's revolutionizing our understanding of human migration patterns, ancient trade networks, and the very definition of what it means to be Indonesian. For decades, the scientific consensus was built around what's called the Out of Taiwan Theory, which painted a relatively straightforward picture of Indonesian origins. According to this model, around 4,000 years ago, Austronesian-speaking farmers migrated from Taiwan, methodically island-hopping through the Philippines and eventually reaching Indonesia, bringing with them agriculture, pottery-making techniques, and new languages that would eventually spread across the entire Pacific region. This theory suggested that these Austronesian peoples either replaced or largely absorbed the earlier hunter-gatherer populations they encountered, creating a genetic landscape dominated by Taiwanese ancestry with perhaps some minor mixing with local groups. The evidence seemed compelling at the time. Linguistic similarities across the Pacific, similar pottery styles, and agricultural practices all appeared to support this north-to-south migration model that had become the standard explanation taught in universities worldwide. However, this neat and tidy narrative began to crumble when geneticists started examining actual DNA samples from Indonesian populations. The first hints that something was wrong came from studies of mitochondrial DNA, which revealed far more genetic diversity than the out-of-Taiwan theory could explain. But it wasn't until large-scale genome sequencing projects began in the 2000s tens that scientists realized just how fundamentally flawed their understanding had been. The genetic reality of Indonesian populations was not just more complex than expected, it was so intricate and surprising that it demanded a complete rethinking of how humans had populated one of the world's most important maritime regions. In 2021, a massive international collaboration published what would become one of the most important genetic studies in Southeast Asian history, analyzing the complete genomes of over 2,000 people from across Southeast Asia and Oceania. What they discovered about Indonesian DNA was absolutely revolutionary and completely overturned everything scientists thought they knew about the region's genetic history. Instead of finding evidence for a simple Austronesian replacement model, researchers uncovered a genetic landscape of staggering complexity that told the story of multiple ancient populations, extensive mixing, and migration patterns that were far more intricate than anyone had imagined. The study revealed that Indonesian genetic ancestry consists of at least five major ancestral components, each representing different waves of human migration and settlement that occurred over tens of thousands of years. The first component was ancient Papuan ancestry. 
But here's what shocked researchers. This genetic signature wasn't confined to eastern Indonesia, where you'd expect it based on geography, but was found throughout the entire archipelago, including in western populations that were supposedly dominated by Austronesian ancestry. The second component was indeed Austronesian ancestry from the Taiwan migration, but it represented a much smaller proportion of total Indonesian DNA than the out-of-Taiwan theory had predicted, often comprising less than 30% of an individual's genetic makeup. The third component was perhaps the most mysterious, what researchers termed First Sunderland Ancestry, representing the original inhabitants of the ancient landmass that connected Southeast Asia during the Ice Age. This component was particularly prevalent in Western Indonesian populations and suggested that the descendants of these Ice Age peoples had survived and thrived long after their homeland was submerged by rising seas. The fourth component revealed South Asian ancestry, indicating ancient connections to the Indian subcontinent that predated any known historical contact by thousands of years. The fifth and final component showed East Asian ancestry that was distinct from the Austronesian migration, suggesting that multiple waves of East Asian peoples had reached Indonesia through different routes, and at different times throughout prehistory. Perhaps the most shocking discovery to emerge from the genetic data was evidence of the first Sundalen peoples, a previously unknown ancestral population that had lived on the ancient supercontinent of Sundaland and whose genetic legacy persists in modern Indonesians in ways that no one had predicted. During the last ice age, which ended around 12,000 years ago, sea levels were approximately 400 feet lower than they are today, creating a massive landmass that connected what is now Indonesia to mainland Southeast Asia. This ancient continent, known as Sundaland, was home to sophisticated hunter-gatherer societies that developed complex cultures, trade networks, and technologies that allowed them to thrive in this tropical environment for thousands of years. The genetic evidence suggests that these first Sundaland peoples weren't simply replaced or absorbed by later agricultural migrants, as previous theories had suggested. Instead, they survived the dramatic environmental changes that occurred when rising seas began to fragment their homeland into thousands of separate islands, adapting to new maritime environments while maintaining their distinct genetic identity. Some populations in Sumatra and Java show up to 40% first Sundaland ancestry, meaning that nearly half their DNA comes from people who lived there before the islands were even separated by the rising seas that created the Indonesian archipelago we know today. This discovery has profound implications for our understanding of human adaptability and cultural continuity. The first Sundaland peoples weren't just passive victims of climate change. They were active agents who developed sophisticated maritime technologies, established trade networks between emerging islands, and maintained cultural connections across vast distances of open ocean. Their genetic legacy in modern Indonesian populations suggests that they didn't just survive the transformation of their world, they played a crucial role in shaping the cultural and genetic landscape of maritime Southeast Asia for millennia after their original homeland disappeared beneath the waves. Eastern Indonesia presented researchers with an even more complex genetic puzzle that challenged every assumption about population movements in the region. Scientists had expected to find populations in places like Flores, Timor, and the Maluku Islands that showed primarily Papuan ancestry, given their proximity to New Guinea and the fact that these islands had never been connected to the Asian mainland even during the Ice Age. Instead, they discovered populations with genetic signatures that didn't match either typical Austronesian or Papuan patterns, suggesting that the human history of Eastern Indonesia was far more complicated than anyone had imagined. The genetic data revealed evidence of multiple waves of migration into Eastern Indonesia that occurred through completely different routes and at different time periods. Some groups appeared to have island hopped directly from the north, possibly from the Philippines, or even from coastal China, while others seemed to have followed western coastal routes that brought them through the Indonesian archipelago over thousands of years. 
Even more surprising was the discovery that these different populations weren't just passing through eastern Indonesia. They were establishing permanent settlements, developing complex trade networks, and intermarrying with each other in ways that created entirely new genetic combinations. The Maluku Islands, often called the Spice Islands, showed genetic signatures from at least four different ancient populations, reflecting their role as a crucial hub in ancient trade networks that connected Southeast Asia, New Guinea, and the Pacific Islands. Sulawesi displayed one of the most complex genetic profiles ever documented by researchers, with ancestry components that seemed to arrive from every direction, north from the Philippines, west from Java, and Sumatra, south from the Lesser Sunda Islands, and east from New Guinea and the Pacific. This genetic complexity wasn't random, but appeared to follow ancient trade routes, marriage networks, and cultural exchanges that had been operating for thousands of years before any European contact. What emerged from the genetic data was a picture of Indonesia not as a destination for migrating populations, but as a series of ancient mixing zones where different human populations had been meeting, trading, and intermarrying for thousands of years, creating some of the most genetically diverse populations on Earth. These mixing zones weren't random. They followed patterns of ocean currents, seasonal wind patterns, and natural harbors that made them ideal locations for ancient seafaring peoples to establish trading posts and settlements. The genetic evidence revealed that these ancient trade networks were far more sophisticated and extensive than historians had previously realized. DNA signatures showed connections between Indonesian populations and groups as far away as the Indian subcontinent, southern China, and the Pacific Islands, suggesting that Indonesian peoples weren't just recipients of outside influences, but were active participants in maritime trade networks that spanned the entire Indo-Pacific region. Some populations showed genetic evidence of contact with South Asian traders that predated any known historical records of such interactions by thousands of years. The complexity of these genetic mixing patterns has profound implications for understanding ancient Indonesian societies. Rather than isolated island populations, the genetic data reveals communities that were cosmopolitan and internationally connected, with genetic lineages that span continents and reflect thousands of years of cultural exchange. The genetic variation within Indonesia rivals that of all of Africa, the birthplace of humanity, and individual Indonesian islands can show more genetic diversity than entire continents elsewhere reflecting the unique role that Indonesia played as a maritime crossroads where different branches of humanity came together and created something entirely new. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.